Hello, everyone. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Samantha Varner, Director of Customer Success and Implementation Services here at ProSymmetry. Um, today, we are looking at what is Tempest Resource as part of our Tempest University series. So who is this video great for? This video is good for any new users of Tempest, um, any existing users of Tempest that are, that are looking to get a bigger picture of what Tempest can do and how all of the pieces and parts interact together and of course anyone who may be considering purchasing Tempest and using it at their organization. So let's dive right into our topic today. What is Tempest Resource? So glad you asked. So Tempest Resource at its core is a strategic capacity planning and project and portfolio forecasting solution. What does that mean? Tempest Resource looks at your resource pool, your team, the named individuals on your team who are doing the work to achieve your project, your audit, your engagement, uh, your portfolio, the products that you are building. Tempest Resource is going to look at those individuals who are doing that work to achieve those goals their capacity, how much time they have to give, and how often or how much they are working on that project to determine if you have the team, the right number of people on the team, I should say, to get that work done. Now, there is so much more to this, and we are going to see all of the areas that this covers today, um, and I cannot wait to get started. So today I am in uh, Tempest Resource. So this is the home screen. Now, one thing I want to note is I am on version 7.1. So if you are an existing user of Tempest and, and you're noticing that things look a little bit modern, that is intentional. Um, version 7.1 is um, as of fall 2022 is our most recent version, and we are so excited for this one. We are so excited for what's coming in the future. Um, but today we're going to cover really what is Tempest Resource as a whole and how do all of these items work together? So first and foremost, we have to start with resource management. In this resource management tile here, this is going to show you a listing of all of your resources. Now, one thing I want to mention, as you know, as Tempest users, the security and access around Tempest projects, resources, all of those items is highly flexible, which means if you are a user, you may not have access to all of your resources. You also may not have access to all of the functionality I'm going to cover today. So just something to be mindful of. But within this resource management screen here, we are going to see a listing of all of the resources that I have access to. If I pull in specific attributes as columns, you will notice that they populate right here. You will notice that I can sort by maybe resource capacity start date. Um, I could filter out potentially all of my demand planning resources within here as well. This screen is going to be customizable to the end user here. And the reason why I want to highlight that is because end users can create their own views. So for example, if I am the manager of the uh, production team, I can filter by department, which is a custom field that I as a user would have set to set up. I can select production. And now I will notice here, I have all of my resources who belong to that production team in this list here and I can uh, go into them. I can edit an attribute uh, right here. I can manage them within this screen. Now, of course, um, those who are users of Tempest may know that we have views available. So we have um, these views here are going to be customizable to the end user, except the only one that's not customizable to the end user is going to be any shared views that we have as denoted by the blue eyeball icon. Shared views are going to be created and managed by Tempest admins. Um, so whoever that is at your organization, definitely make sure that they know that view management is available. Um, and if you think that it's helpful, go ahead and encourage them to build a view. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and dive into a specific resource. So I'm going to select the resource named Dave Boiza here. If you are familiar, Dave Boiza is part of our team, uh, so we're going to pick on him a little bit. So as you know, Tempest is a resource management tool, a capacity planning tool, which means that you need to define the capacity that your team has available. So in my system here, we have determined that eight hours per day 
is our capacity. You will notice when I go over to FTE that eight hours per day equates to one FTE. If we look at the weekly level, you'll notice that it's 40 hours per week. And then at the monthly level, the number of working days determines how many hours are available. Capacity is really important in Tempest. It really is the main driver for pretty much everything, including those very, very popular heat maps that you can pull, um, any reporting that you want to do uh, based on your allocation or your plan or your forecast versus capacity to understand, you know, can I even do this work? Is this work at risk? Capacity is going to drive almost everything within Tempest. So one thing I recommend you do is make sure that you understand at your organization, is eight hours per day a true capacity? Is it seven and a half hours per day? Is it 35 hours per week? That is all super customizable, all 100% possible to do and something your organization would have to make sure you define. So capacity is extremely important. Now, as we look more at this capacity grid here, we notice that we can input holiday calendars. And if we scroll over to the uh, 2022 year, you'll notice that I have holiday time in both March and April. You'll notice that that eats away at that base capacity, just making sure again that the capacity is accurate in those months specifically. We also have the option to include um, admin time. Admin time can be a controversial topic among our users. Um, admin time is going to further eat away at your capacity. So in this example here, I am using PTO as my admin time. If I were to be Dave's manager or someone just managing Dave's capacity within here, say I know Dave's taking eight hours of PTO in February, you'll notice that that will again eat away at that base capacity giving Dave a net capacity of 152 hours in that month of February. Now, as I say, admin time can be controversial. You can manage this admin time with a project as well. We will walk through the benefits of doing one or the other in a later, um, or I should say in a different video. Uh, so make sure to watch out for that one. And I'm just going to remove these just to make sure my data remains clean. So that is capacity. Now, the one thing I do want to show you here is going to be what we call this cross project allocation grid. This cross project allocation grid is going to give you a bird's eye view into all of the work Dave has ever worked on. So in the year of 2022, um, in this example, Dave's capacity started on January 3rd of 2022. So starting January 3rd, I'm able to see all of the projects that Dave has worked on, the hours assigned to him, um, and what, what we can expect here with a net availability view down below. Now, you'll notice this data is a little inflated, um, but that's by purpose, that's by design. We want to make sure that we're calling out um, all of these areas that, that can be helpful to you. All right, and then within each resource, we have what I like to call a resource profile, which is really just the attributes that are further defined within the resource. So, of course, we have user identity, which is going to, um, you know, give does Dave have permission to log in? Um, what global role and what security group is Dave part of? Um, is Dave enabled? You know, is he still at this organization? Is he still an active resource? All of that information can be defined in user identity. Next, the, this detail section and Tempest setup section. These are two customly defined sections. So out of the box, um, you may notice that Tempest attribute sections are uh, named required fields and optional fields. You can change that, and in this example, I have. So here I have details about the resource. I have determined that um, this is the order that I want these uh, attributes to fall into within here. Then I also have some Tempest setup details, like, you know, is Dave um, a timesheet user? He is, so who is his timesheet approver? It is Samantha Varner. Um, if I have the resource request workflow, you know, is that who who is managing that as well? So again, attribute layout, extremely customizable, and uh, we will cover attribute management in a different video, so make sure to check that out. And then finally, we have the skill matrix. <clears throat> Within Tempest, 
every resource can have a defined skill matrix applied to them. And the skills are going to be defined by the admin within admin management. And again, there's another video that will cover that in detail. Um, but within here, we can determine that we want to apply maybe some coding skills to Dave. And we can rank Dave's coding skills, whether it's uh, C Sharp, as we have here as an example, JavaScript, JSON, things like that. And I can come in here and determine what Dave's skills are. Now, the really cool thing about this skill matrix is if Dave had access to the system, he could log in and he could also define his own skills. So there are many options for which direction this can go. And again, skills will be covered in its own skills matrix video. All right, so resource management. Resources really drive everything about Tempest, specifically those named resources. But one thing that I do want to cover is going to be demand planning resources, because this is a really important part of Tempest as well. So I'm going to go ahead and sort uh, just so I can see where my demand planning resources are. And give me just a second here. Perfect. So a demand planning resource, resource, think of it as a generic resource. Maybe it's a role, maybe it's a skill, maybe it's a team. Um, it really allows you to apply allocation, apply a forecast, a plan to a generic role before you know who that named resource is. Um, so in this example, we have a business analyst. And you will notice that the demand planning resource is configured by the flag is demand planning resource. You will notice that the base capacity, unlike Dave, is now purple. And even though these numbers exist, Tempest will say, hey, this business analyst is a demand planning resource, meaning anytime we are looking at capacity, this resource effectively has none. So if you're using these generic role based resources, I recommend you have this demand planning turned on. Keep the capacity of hours in there, FTE, whatever you do and go from there. And you'll notice this profile is exactly the same as it was for Dave, our named resource. Attributes can be applied, which is very important when you're in reporting. If you wanted to, you could even apply some skills to these uh, to these uh, demand planning resources at well, maybe as well. Maybe there's a desired skill profile for these roles. 100% possible to do. All right, so we covered resources, the people, the magic behind what you do and how things get done. Now let's cover project. People need projects, they need work to do, right? So within project management, we are going to see that this is really the home of all projects. Um, so within here, I have some specific columns pulled in to create my view. Again, just as you could do with the resource man uh, management area, you can create those custom views for project management. Your admin can also create a global view to share um, as well. So take advantage of these views. They are, they are awesome. So let's go ahead and look into a project that already exists. <clears throat> So when I come in here to this Aurora phase 14, or I'm sorry, Aurora phase 15 project, my screen automatically lands on the allocations page. This is uh, how I have it set up in default settings. And we'll notice again, very similar to our resource. Actually, we have a grid here. This is what we call the single project allocation grid. And before we dive too deep into this grid, I do want to cover a few other things about our project. So just like our resources, um, our projects do have an attributes area. And just like our resources, this attributes area can be customly defined. You can determine um, you know, what order all of your attributes go into, uh, what details or what section you want as well. All is customizable to your organization. Um, within each project, you do have the ability to um, tie some dependencies and we'll see how these interact with each other later, uh, but really cool functionality when it comes to our roadmap management area. And then, of course, within every project, you do have a few project options available to you as well. Uh, we're not going to cover all of these in this video. I highly recommend you check out the videos that are specific to these functionalities in here, but just wanted to show you what is available. 
All right, so let's dive into the allocation area. So where the magic really happens with Tempest. You have your people, you have your team, you have the work that needs to get done. So where do I combine? Where do I marry those two within Tempest? And that is going to be within our allocation grids. So within the individual project, we have the single project allocation grid. Now I have all options configured on, uh, for my grid in here, resource, tasks, project level planning, quarter level planning, monthly level planning, week, day, time, cost, FTE, percentage, uh, even a Gantt view, a person day view for those who use person days. Um, all of these are customizable to you and available to you to use. So within the single project allocation grid, and again, we'll have another video that goes full deep, uh, full details into this one specifically. You can not only create new assignments, excuse me, but you can edit existing ones as well. And one of the reasons everyone loves Tempest is just how easy the UI is when it does come to making these assignments. Um, I like to think, you know, this is pretty much Excel right here. This is pretty much Excel. Um, this is exactly how you would do it in Excel, where you would click the cell, type in the information, and be done. So this is our single project allocation grid. If we wanted to overlay the heat map, we could do so here. Apologies, wrong button to see, OK, where are we at? How over allocated are my resources on this project? Do I need to be concerned? And scrolling through this grid here, I may want to be concerned. It looks like everyone is a little over allocated based on how I have my heat map defined. Um, you could also determine, do I want to see my generic tasks only or those project level tasks? Do I only want to see data in regards to my non generic, so my custom tasks? Um, you can now decide how you want, you as the individual user, want this view to be available to you. Additionally, uh, just like you can do now in our project management and resource management uh, list, how you can pull in those columns, or I should say attributes as columns, within the single project allocation grid, you can pull in uh, project attributes, resource attributes, assignment attributes into the grid here. Again, just to help you further define what's going on or maybe allow you to um, have a little bit more information in front of you when it does come to these making these assignments. All right, so that is enough about our single project allocation grid. Let's go to our flat grid. So like I said, there are multiple areas to make these assignments, to carry out this planning or forecasting or scheduling, whatever you name it. Um, there are multiple areas to do this. And again, the resource must exist, the project must exist, whether that project is an audit, an engagement, a product, a program, um, whatever your team calls it. The work item must exist along with the resource. So when we go into our bulk, project allocation flat grid. And because that is such a long word, or I'm sorry, a long name, I'm going to call this just the flat grid. And when we go into the flat grid, you will notice I have my view curated here. Specifically, I have a few resources selected over here. I have all of the work that they're assigned to within this time frame above. And my grid down here, the flat grid, shows me all of the data associated to those resources, the projects that they are on for this time period here. And if I click into the cell, I can even make updates. So the flat grid is really our most popular screen within Tempest because it's so flexible. Not only can you update existing assignments, uh, within the flat grid, whether in your whether you are in resource or project mode, but you can also create new ones. So, for example, if I wanted to filter to a specific team, so again, let's pretend that I am the manager of the marketing team. I can select all of my marketing resources. I can select the one project that I would like to assign them to. Now we'll notice it looks like Ashley here as an example is already assigned to this project. Perfectly fine. Um, but within here, I can create that new assignment. So maybe I want to put um, Allison on Astro Phase 7 on this specific task if I choose to use that. 
for the month of October. I can do that, and once I click Save, this now becomes an assignment. Now, let's go down the example of me continuing to be the marketing, uh, the, the marketing manager. So again, default mode is going to allow me to make those new assignments for my team. Resource mode, um, and you'll notice I still have it filtered, or I did have it filtered, I should say. <clears throat> Let me set my filter back up for my marketing team here. You'll now notice that all of these resources are selected, and that was because they were in the past. But the one thing you'll notice is I no longer have to select a project, and that is because I am approaching this from a resource standpoint. So I am telling Tempest, hey, show me Natalie and Pippa and all of the projects they are on right now. As Natalie and Pippa's manager, I want to see this information. And again, just like in the single project allocation grid, I can come in here and choose how I'm going to make this assignment. <clears throat> now, let's talk about maybe a different approach. So say I am a project manager um, specifically for um, a specific office. Say I'm a project manager in our Belfast office. I can come in here, select the project that is associated to the Belfast office, and you'll now notice all of my resources populate and are available within this grid down below. So again, this screen here, most popular of Tempest, we do have a video that is a deep dive on the flat grid itself um, that if it's not available, will be available soon. So I highly recommend you check that out if this screen is something that you are interested in. So those two areas, the single project allocation grid and the flat grid are going to be how you make those assignments. This is where I envision uh, your users spending a majority of the time if they are making those updates within Tempest. All right, so for those of you who know Tempest well enough to know that we also have a timesheets feature, I do wanna point out that whether you are in the single project allocation grid or, excuse me, you are in the flat grid here, you can also compare your planned allocation, which is going to be this red or pink circle that we have here against your actual, which down in the grid is gonna be represented by this green circle here. This is important. Um, whether or not you are a timesheet user and when the um, timesheets get saved and approved, that data is writing back to the actuals, or you are an organization that are ma that's maybe importing um, timesheet information from a different system into Tempest. It's really important to know all of the ways that you can view those actuals, so that way your team can make some real-time decisions uh, within the grid itself. <clears throat> All right, so we talked about all the ways to make your plan, your forecast, your schedule, whatever that is. Now let's talk about actuals just a little bit more. So if you are a Tempest timesheet user, or maybe you're just interested in it, let's cover what the timesheet could look like for you. So in this example here, I, Samantha Varner, as a resource, um, am assigned to the Apollo Phase 14 project on the specific practice A task. And say on Apollo phase 14, maybe I'm also doing some work on practice C. Within the timesheet in here, I can track my time at the daily level. Um, if your timesheet period is a little bit longer, maybe it's every two weeks or a month, I could also track this information uh, by the period level as well. <clears throat> So if I come in here, you'll now notice I've turned off that group view. I've gone to the period and say I know that regardless of the days, I spent 14 hours on practice A for Apollo phase 14 and maybe another 26 on practice C this week. Awesome. That equals those 40 hours down here. I am going to submit my timesheet and have that be um, submitted for approval. <clears throat> As soon as that timesheet is approved, this data will be written back to those actuals, which is one of the reasons why having that actual allocation data in Tempest is so powerful because you can uh, compare the two just to know, you know, how's your plan going? All right, so from there, we're going to take a back, uh, step back a little bit and, and kind of go from 10,000 feet up. So 
you have your resources and their capacity to find. You have your projects, you have maybe your tasks defined within there, or maybe you don't use tasks and you have your resources. You're now making assignments on those projects, whether that is with a demand planning resource or generic resource or a named resource. You have several options, but now that those things are in flight, now that the data is in there, maybe you want to look at this information in a variety, in a variety of different reports. So today we're going to be focusing on Tempest's out of the box functionality. If you are familiar or you have heard of Tempest Insight Plus, we're not going to be covering that today. We're only going to be covering what is um, out of the box with Tempest. And the first one I want to go into is, is a functionality that's a little bit newer. So roadmap management. <clears throat> Within roadmap management, I am seeing a few different things. So I am seeing a roadmap of all of my projects or the ones that I have filtered to to create this view. I am seeing specifically all of my projects grouped by priority and then phase. So both priority and phase are project attributes that I have in my system. Yours might be office, for example. Um, maybe instead of priority, you use a status or maybe you use both. Um, the roadmap here allows you to group your projects by those specific attributes so that way you can see this information in a way that makes sense to you. So from a qu quick scroll here, I can see that I am looking at for the next two years, so starting January of 2022, through the end of 2024. Looks like my data ends in 2023, which is perfectly fine. Um, but within here, this roadmap is telling us a few different things. So first off, um, we do have a few settings that apply specifically to the roadmap itself. For example, a roadmap specific milestone. Say I know that the company has, or the team as a whole, has a milestone that we have to get to, or maybe a specific deliverable. So we're not talking about project specific milestones, although those are available as you can see here, but I can create a milestone that overlays this roadmap specifically. And that is going to be done in the build of the roadmap. Again, there will be a video, a video on how to create and manage roadmaps um, available as well. In the roadmap, you may notice, okay, why do we have some shaded areas here? One great thing about this roadmap is it also is going to show you any risks to your project. So Tempest has defined risks as an over allocation risk. So maybe uh, your team is over allocated and we need to know when there are resources who are over allocated. Um, concurrency risk, maybe you want to say, hey, my resources should not be assigned to more than five projects at any given time period. You could turn that on. Additionally, if you are using the actual allocation data set, you can have a progress bar display within the uh, Gantt bar of the project. Um, so this is available to you. You can configure it how you would like. Right now, my roadmap is um, showing an over allocation risk. And you'll notice that the uh, July of 2022, for example, here, almost all of my projects are, sh are shaded, which means that a risk is present. So let's go ahead and click one of these. So within this project here, um, I am seeing my top five resources that are the most over allocated. So again, taking on Dave Boiza, Dave Boiza in July of 2022 is 468% allocated. That's probably not a good thing. Sam King, 321% allocated with Duracell Phase 17 taking up 61% of that allocation. Now, you may be thinking, where are these percentages coming from? That is why capacity is so important. These percentages, the heat map, everything is going to be in relation to capacity. So that's why it's very important to make sure that's accurate for your organization. Now, back to the roadmap. So it's pretty much safe to say here that this project and many other projects, as we can see here, are at risk of getting completed. Now let's go ahead and turn on that concurrency risk just to see what that looks like. My system, my roadmap specifically is saying that anywhere where a resource is assigned to five or more projects needs to be shaded. So if we look at September of 2022, uh, we can notice here that I have a handful of resources that are on um, five or I should say more than five projects 
Bruce being on seven specifically. So this is a good way to kind of see those bottleneck resources, again, at that higher level view. <clears throat> All right, so next we have Tempest What If, which really is our scenario planning, our modeling, our sandbox, whatever you want to call it. Tempest What If is one of our most powerful features of Tempest Resource, just because it allows you to model those what ifs, those scenarios. Um, you know, what happens if a project gets added um, midway through the year? What happens if a project gets canceled? What happens if, unfortunately, I have to lay off several members of my team? Um, this model is going to tell you what is going to be at risk if those items come to fruition. So we have a few things here. Up top, we have our Gantt um, view that is interactive. So within here, I can extend a project. And if you're paying attention to my grid below, you can see those percentage, percentages change. <clears throat> I can move a project if I want to say this bid project one is going to start sooner. I can move one out, say it's going to start later. And what this is doing, what this interactive item is doing is showing me the impact to my resources below. So this model specifically, and as you can imagine, there will be a, a video specifically on configuring a model, is showing me my resources by that department level. So you'll see marketing, production, human resource management, all of these here. And when I click down into them, I have my department, then I have my role. And within here, I am able to see both the individuals. So how allocated is what I'm looking at here with this heat map are the individuals. What is that roll up like for all analysts on the human resource management team? What is that roll up look like? And then as we even go up to that, that additional roll up, what is that like for the human resource management team overall? So this screen here is really your way to play around to better understand what the impact of things shifting. Um, maybe if you're doing an annual planning exercise, you want to come in here to determine what is the order of my projects? When can things start? This model is going to help you answer that question. <clears throat> Now, I also wanted to show you uh, some of the different areas within the model itself. So um, you can see a before and after of, hey, what was this before the change? What was this after the change? You can also see a net availability grid uh, when it comes to, you know, what is the availability like at the team level, at the um, individual level, a little bit of everything in here. So this is going to give you a lot of information. For our more advanced users, I'll say, we also have an area where you can really play around with the individual allocation for a resource on any of their projects as well. And again, we will do a whole video on different things that you can do with the models um, and what information you can glean from this, but wanted to make sure that we covered it here. All right, now, Two more things before I let you go, and we are going to go back into this resource management tile here. So with 7.1, we did introduce this net availability grid, and what this net availability grid is showing us specifically is for the next year, what is the net availability of my team? So I am looking at this grid right now in FTE at the monthly level, specifically my planned allocation. I have some specific attributes pulled in this columns just to help me further understand what's going on. And you will notice in here that, let's use Amy as an example. In February of 2023, Amy is over allocated, or I should say has a net availability of negative 0.64. That is almost another person whole person that needs to take on some work of Amy's. However, in March of 2023, Amy is pretty much available if we start digging into this a, a little bit more. So this net availability grid is going to give you a quick view into how available your resources are. And again, net availability is going to be those allocation hours or FTE compared to their, uh, to their capacity. Within this grid here, we could even look at, okay, well, what does our capacity look like for these individuals? 
What does the allocations look like? When we dig into net availability, you can say, hey, only show me the people who are over allocated, who have negative availability. This is a fantastic screen because it allows you to see quickly what is the status of my resource pool of my entire team. Um, maybe you're a manager of a specific team within here and you want to see, OK, what's the status? Very high level um, without you know going into the flat grid and creating that view. So very important to know that this is here. Very important to understand how it works. I am hopeful that this is going to be a fantastic resource for um, <laughs> a fantastic, I should say, use case for Tempest resource um, for all of our users. And lastly, I did want to cover report management. Again, out of the, po out of the box reporting functionality um, is available. We have pivot grids, which are very simil similar to Excel pivot tables. We have different charts available, portfolio planner, um, just a, a lot of good options for you here. So in this example here, I am looking at allocation versus capacity for all resources who have the role of director. So this is going to give me a very quick glance into um, Alexis, for example, has this much capacity um, and on the it, and she is not assigned to any project specifically in January. However, Colin has 84 hours of capacity and has this much assignment hours made as well. So pivot table, any attributes that are in your system, um, any um, allocation hours, whether that's planned or actual or maybe even FTE, all that information can be pulled into here. Additionally, without going into detail of all of our available reports, you could see the exact same information in a chart as well. So in here, instead of looking at the individual directors, I'm just looking at the directors overall. The green line here indicates their base capacity and the orange line here indicates how many planned allocation hours do I have? So for example, in the month of October of 2022, I'm over allocated. I do not have enough directors to do that work, but you'll notice in the months before and even after, I have a lot of capacity still. So maybe some of this October work could get pushed. That's a decision that could be made with these reports. So again, report management, fantastic. You can do a lot with it, and it's important to understand uh, which, which uh, report is, is best for you. And again, like everything else, there will be videos specific to each report type. Um, you can find those in the Tempest University playlist. All right. With that said, there is a lot that we did not cover today. We really only kept it high level. We kept it um, just enough so that way you can understand what Tempest Resource can do. Um, stay tuned to the Tempest University playlist on YouTube. We are going to be continuously updating that with um, videos, quick little how to's, um, admin setup, um, things that are just important to know as a user or maybe even a power user. It's going to be a great uh, resource for you to have. With that said, thank you so much for your time today. We hope to see you in the next video.